I'm often asked how I rig my spoons, and I'll show you three or four different ways to do it. The first thing to try is just tie it direct to the spoon with whatever line you use. Um, I believe Daryl Binkley uses fluorocarbon and he ties it direct. There's probably some information on the Binks website. I tie mine a little bit different because I use fire line and braid and I have a problem with the fire line is so flexible and braid so flexible when you're spinning the spoon will jump up and grab the line and then you got to reel it up and untangle it. So I tie a leader on mine. This is fire line on this pole. I do a back to back uni knot and if you search on YouTube you can find how to tie that knot. So it's eight pound fire line and I got 40 pound catfish mono. I use something really stiff for my leader. Um, 20 pound fluorocarbon. I got one clear lake that I fish uh, by my house. I'll use the fluorocarbon there and all the rest of the lakes around my area. If I go to like Bull Shoals or Norfolk, of course, I'll use a clear leader. But around here, I use catfish mono. Here's 30 pound strand in orange and then trilene, it's just stuff I catfish with, I just use it for leaders too. Uh, green 40 pound trilene big cat. But anyway, when you got the catfish mono, it's just stiffer than normal mono and I'd use at least 30 pound. And then that'll keep the spoon from jumping up and grabbing your line. And I'll usually use about an 18 inch leader. And then just try different colors too, I really think it helps in these stained lakes. Orange and green are my favorite. And then another way to rig it is if, if you tie the leader on there to the swivel that comes with the spoon and you, you still have the problem with the spoon jumping up and grabbing your line, another way to do it is I'll completely take the hardware off of the spoon and tie your stiff mono leader. You know, here this is 40 pound catfish mono again. Tie it direct to the spoon and then take the leader, the swivel that comes with it and put it up here 18 inches away from your lure and use that instead of your back-to-back -back uni knot. And then, and then that, that'll really keep it from jumping up and hitting the spoon because it's pretty stiff. It kills a little bit of the action of the spoon, but sometimes that helps. And then Daryl Binkley, the guy that invented the spoon, has done a lot of research on why your spoon jumps up and grabs the line. And the first thing is, you got to use a short pole. Like this pole right here is bad about the spoon jumping up and grabbing the line. That's why I took the hardware off and tied the swivel up here. But if you use a shorter, stiffer pole, this pole is kind of flexible, but it's my wife's pole. She really likes using it. She doesn't want a specific spoon and pole. So on this specific spoon and pole, it's a little bit stiffer and it's shorter and it's a lot less of the spoon jumping up and grabbing the line. And then the other thing is too, and I'm, I'm really bad about this, when you snap your spoon up, you have to pause a second and then drop it back down. But what I do is I'll jerk it up and I'll follow it down too quick and then that causes your spoon to grab your line. But I really have to I really have to think and concentrate the whole time to not do that if I don't want the spoon to jump up and grab the line. If I tie fire line or braid direct to the spoon, I have to really concentrate the whole time. And I think what it is, I like to I like to my spoon to fall on a semi-slack line. That way I can feel that little tick when I'm getting a bite, because that's what's enjoyable for me about fishing. But if I really concentrate and snap and then pause a second and then take it back down, then it doesn't jump up and I can tie braid direct. Anyway, hope, hopefully that helps you guys.